Now coming to the types of aortic regurgitation. There are three main types of aortic regurgitation and fourth type is also there and these types are based on mechanism of AR, how the AR happen. In type 1, there is a functional dilatation of this aortic root so that blood from the aorta comes back into the left ventricle or you can have a cusp perforation so that the blood from the aorta comes back into the left ventricle. This is type 1. Coming to type 2, here you can see the, the cusp is totally prolapsed so they do not approximate properly because it is not approximating properly the blood from the aorta goes back into the left ventricle or it can be a partial cusp prolapse. This is type 2 coming to type 3 here the cusp is retracted and shortened. So, the approximation would not be there and through which the blood passes into the left ventricle. This is type 3. There is one other type which is severely calcified or you can have vegetation or some things like that which prevents the proper closure of the aortic valve. That is other type. They do not call it as type 4 but it is called as other type of AR. Now coming to the staging of aortic regurgitation. The first stage that is patient at risk of aortic regurgitation. If you look at the valve anatomy, it can be a bicuspid aortic valve or some other congenital anomaly of the aortic valve or they can be just a sclerosed aortic valve, disease of the aortic sinuses or ascending aorta. Sometimes sinus of valsalva aneurysm and those things can also cause an AR. History of rheumatic fever or known rheumatic disease and infective endocarditis. Here the valve hemodynamics, the consequences and symptoms are not there because there is not much AR. Coming to progressive AR which is stage B which stage B is called as progressive aortic regurgitation. Here there is going to be mild to moderate calcification of the aortic valve which can be trileaflet or a congenital bicuspid aortic valve and there will be dilated aortic sinuses. Rheumatic valve changes of deformity and calcification can be there and previous infective endocarditis. If you take the valve hemodynamics, it can be either a mild AR with Z width of less than 25 percent, vena contractor less than 0.3 centimeter, your regurgitation volume is less than 30 ml, the fraction is less than 30 percent and your effective regurgitation orifice area is less than 0 0.1 centimeter squared and angiographically the AR grade is only 1 percent or it can be a moderate AR, the valve hemodynamics can be a moderate AR where your jet width is between 25 to 64 percent, the vena contractor is between 0.3 to 0.6 centimeter, the regurgitation volume is between 30 to 59 ml, the fraction is between 30 to 50 percent and your effective regurgitation orifice area is between 0.1 to 0.29 centimeter square and angiographically your grade of AR is greater than 2 percent. Here the hemodynamic consequences is going to be usually there is normal LV systolic function, enough compensation will be there and the systolic function will be normal. The LV size also will be usually normal but there will be slight mild dilatation because due to increased volume going into the left ventricle, patient will be asymptomatic. This is progressive AR. Now coming to severe AR 